Hi everyone and welcome back. Today we're going to continue the headlight build by rolling the barrel, which is kind of the heart of the headlight. Uh, the surprising thing and why I think a lot of these rusted out is because the barrel was only made of 1 16th inch thick steel, so there's not much to it. So as they started to rot away from like the soot falling on them and just being out of the elements, they didn't hold up that well, which is why I think they were replaced with the steel, with the cast steel ones instead. So what we're going to focus on today is we're going to use this piece that we rolled last video. We're going to attach the feet to it and then the feet, this piece, get riveted to the barrel and then all held together and you kind of get the framework of what the headlight's going to look like. So we're going to get started a while. So I brought in this piece of metal that I'm going to use for the barrel of this headlight. And while I'm at it, I'm probably going to get two out of it because it makes more sense for me to just get two while I'm here with it in here than it is for me to just cut one out, move it back outside, we'll restore our metal and then bring it back in again. So I'm going to make two of them today. Uh, with this, the two most important numbers I need for today is I need the length of the barrel, which is the number, the diameter off the print, which I multiply by pi to get the circumference, which is five foot one and a quarter inch. And then I need the overall width on the print, which I don't have to change that number. And that number ends up being 19 and three eighth inches wide. So I'm going to go width and then I'm going to lay out the length to get the most out of the metal. And I can't lay it out any other way, but a lot of times with metal like this, if you're laying out parts, tip is try to configure it that you use the most metal and have the least amount of drop off or extra so you can maybe make other pieces out of it because metal is not cheap, especially when you get like bigger pieces. If you cut half of it away because you laid it out a different way and you could have laid it out a better way, you'll end up saving yourself some money and time. One of the best pieces of advice I can give whenever you're laying anything out with metal is, for example, so on this one I have enough here to do two uh, headlights. So I can do two barrels with this. Now, I'm not going to measure out my 19 and 3 8 here and on this line measure 19 and 3 8. The reason is because the blade that I'm using with my saw is 1 8 inch thick. If I don't fall on that line exactly where it needs to fall, when I make the next cut, it's going to be a little small. Now for this, it probably wouldn't matter, but where it does matter is if you're cutting out a whole bunch of different pieces out of the same thing, you can cut 20 pieces out, and if you're off less than a 16th, by the time you get to the end, not only is the end piece going to be way short, but every single piece after that is going to be short as well. So be careful and mindful of your blade thicknesses when you're, you're cutting. And that would work also if I was using a die grinder too. The uh, cutting discs are 1 16th thick, 3 64th, depending on what size you get. And that will affect the distances as you're measuring. back at the roll again, one of the nice things when you're rolling a barrel where you have a fixed length of the sheet is I don't need to know how, what the radius of my roll needs to be. All I need to do is roll it so that the two pieces touch and then that's going to give me the radius of what the piece needs to be, which is really nice. Nothing's going to change since the last time we use this. Watch your fingers. I'm going to take my welding jacket off and we're going to roll.
So we have two things next that we're gonna work on. We're gonna make this piece here. This is kind of a support on the bottom. It gets welded to the bottom of the headlight and riveted. And the purpose of it was, this is the piece that holds the headlight in place and the bulb itself. And this was kind of to strengthen the base of it so it wouldn't crack and damage the bottom of the headlight. And then also I went ahead and I marked the center line top and bottom on this sheet. And you're gonna see why I did that in a sec. Here I'm aligning the ends of the barrel and clamping each end with vice grips. This will ensure that the ends stay stationary when I go to tack the barrel together. So I have the barrel here with the outer part that we made last video and you can see there's a gap here and I sanded down my weld so that they can get pushed together. I'm actually going to be able to clamp these together and get them to look pretty good. This I'll hit this dress this up a little bit with a hammer to kind of make it nicer but you won't even see this either and you'll see it in a later video. But the whole reason I did, I drew the center line is that they were smart when they designed this and the center of the headlight is actually hidden behind this plate. And what I can do is I'm gonna turn my light on here. You can use the center line of the barrel and you can line it up just like that with your bolt holes. And now you have the center of the plate. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start assembling all my different pieces together. All right, so the last thing we're gonna to do today is I'm going to start the process of kind of tacking this to the base. Now, one thing I like about metal working, as you might have seen in other videos, is I like the flexibility you have with kind of the tolerances that you're working with. Before, there was a giant gap here, but once I put my C-clamps on here and crushed it in, since this metal's thinner than this metal, it pulled it in, and now there's no gap there anymore. When I design these, there's a couple extra holes I have that what I do, what I believe they were originally for was drainage, but since these are gonna be inside, what I do is I take those holes and I fill them in with weld and I spot weld them to the barrel. They wouldn't have been like that originally, but since I have extra room where I'm not gonna be able to physically fit a rivet because of the foot, I use that to my advantage and I weld it. I think some of the holes too are kind of alignment for the feet, but since I take my time and put them together, it's not that big of a deal. So that's where this is gonna end up this week. Thank you for joining me. Next week, we're gonna continue on the ash pan and we're gonna keep working on that. Thank you for joining me and have a good one.